Welcome back to Invincible Asia. I'm George Clark and this is my review of Yip Man The Awakening. It's fair to say that the popularity of Johnny Yen's Yip Man movies have elevated the name and persona of this real life kung fu master to a whole new level. While martial arts fans had always connected him to superstar Bruce Lee and these new fantasized stories got the film fans excited, soon studios all over Hong Kong and China were keen to start production on their own Ip Man story. While most of them tried to work in some ways to the timeline of the Wilson Yip directed movies, others set out on a path of their own, much like this one. Yip Man The Awakening tells the tale of its titular hero in his earlier days, set before he became the revered grandmaster and started a family. Similar in ways to the time period of Herman Yao's The Legend Is Born Ip Man with Dennis Tu, which is also a fantastic movie. Not long after he arrives in Hong Kong, the young hero finds himself in a city full of crime and jumps straight into action to stop a mugging on a tram, which incidentally reunites him with an old friend called Bu Feng. To help his heroic friend, Feng gets Yip Man a job with him as a rickshaw driver and introduces him to new friends as well as his sister Chan. Not long into his job, Yip comes across a gang of human traffickers who are attempting to kidnap all the young women from the town. Springing into action once again, Yip Man saves the damsels in distress but soon finds himself in trouble with Mr. Stark, an angry British crime boss who is behind the smuggling. In a bid to lure Yip Man back to his home, Stark kidnaps Boo and Chan, then sets two of his prize fighters on the young hero who proved to be a handful. But after Yip Man comes out on top, Stark challenges him to a public battle where he aims to see Yip Man defeated and destroy the hopes of the Chinese people so that he can continue his reign of terror. While many have criticised this film for its short running time, low production values and its basic storytelling, I found it to be quite an enjoyable kung fu romp with plenty of neatly choreographed martial arts battles which really were its saving grace. But the major highlight for me was its main star, Chi Mu, the highly talented and cute child star from Jet Li's Forgotten Classics, New Legend of Shaolin and My Father is a Hero. Starting life in the Hong Kong film industry at the age of nine with a role in Frankie Chan's swordplay epic, A Warrior's Tragedy, Mu found himself called for the first of the Jet Li movies by director Wong Jing in 1994. That same year, Wong would cast the young star alongside Chow Yun-Fat in the fantastic God of Gamblers Returns, before pairing him up once more with Jet Li in the aforementioned My Father is a Hero, this time with Wong Jing producing and Corey Yoon Kwai directing. While it seemed that a bright future lay ahead for the young star and martial arts film fans around the world couldn't get enough of him, Chi Mu would only appear in one more film as a kid before shifting over to the small screens for a period of time. That film was the Wong Jing produced Teenage Master, a fun family comedy also known as My Father is a Hero 2, which put Chi in his first main leading role alongside Hong Kong stars such as Ken Lo, Ng Man Tat and Colin Chow, among many others. In 2003, and now an adult, Chi Mu would return to film in Daniel Lai's Iron Lion and has since continued to star martial arts features such as Chai Su Ming's underrated champions, Empire of Assassins, The Kung Fu Master and more including Choi Hark's epic Taking of Tiger Mountain and The Thousand Faces of Dun Jai, as well as a host of television shows and web movies. Although in his late 30s at the time of shooting, Chi highly impresses as the young Ip Man and still carries that natural look of anger on his face that he always had as a kid, giving Kung Fu fans something to smile about as he delivers some fantastic moves and proves that his time as a kick-ass child star was only the tip of the iceberg. Chi is joined by a cast of Chinese actors, most of which I'm not too familiar with, except for Hu Tong Jiang, an older actor who has also starred in films such as Kevin Chu's Just Call Me Nobody, Empire of Silver and Monk Comes Down the Mountain, with the latter two also starring Aaron Kwok. I must also point out the wide use of Western actors, most of whom did a pretty good job and especially those in the action department. The film is directed by Li Zhiji and Shang Zhu Lin, with the former also directing Xi Mu in the brilliant 18 Arhats of Shaolin Temple, an epic TV web movie made on a much grander scale. Before this, Zhang had directed the fun action fantasy film The Mystical Treasure, which being another low budget movie, still proved to be enjoyable and was big on creativity. The fantastic martial arts action was handled by choreographers Xi Zhang Biao and Zhu Wei, a couple of fresh action directors who have been in front of the camera just as much as they've been behind it. 
Regardless, they managed to deliver a number of well-spaced and highly exciting kung fu fight scenes, from brutal gang showdowns to well-designed one-on-ones. Any true fan of kung fu cinema can't deny that when he's on screen and Timu busts a move, it's always highly impressive. The story of Yip Man The Awakening isn't as dramatic or engrossing as Donnie Yen's bigger productions, but you can definitely see the inspiration from them in certain scenes throughout the movie. To be honest, it's a story I'd have expected to see in a Wong Fei Hung movie, if I haven't seen it already, and especially those of the past decade or so. That said though, for a movie that runs under 80 minutes in length, I wasn't expecting a finely tuned piece or a screenplay that was going to win many awards. What I expected to see was solid kung fu action, and that is exactly what we got. I only hope that we start to see more of Chi Mu's movies made available very, very soon. Overall though, while hardly original in its story or execution, Yip Man The Awakening still makes for a fun watch and has plenty of great kung fu action to enjoy. So thank you once again for watching another video here on Invincible Asia. Don't forget you can check out hundreds of others here on the channel. You can also show your continued support by heading over to my new merch store or by checking out InvincibleAsia.com where you can read my full movie reviews and follow me on Instagram at InvincibleAsia. Until next time though, enjoy your Kung Fu and I will see you soon.